Thank you. Thank you. Well, make, uh, my role now is to brief you what transpired on a session one of this forum, which basically focused on the blue economy towards sustainable food supply chains. But before that, there was that, uh, the, there were three or four speeches that were delivered, opening statements that were delivered by Secretary Alcala, Secretary Pai, uh, Ms. Doris Magsaysay Ho, and Senator Drillon. Principally, the focus of their opening statement basically are you know, anchored towards food security on the basis of resilient resource base, mm -hmm. especially on coastal and marine ecosystem. They also, the speeches, the three or four speeches basically, went into uh, giving a bird's eye view of the Philippine, uh, the global or the APEC, APEC regional uh, status of resource uh, resource status, which basically, in general, shows a picture of depletion along, along this region. In session one, Secretary Pai presided the session, and it was composed of six presentation, basically. The first one was made by Director Mundita on marine protected areas and fisheries. Principally, the exhaustive presentation of Philippine, Philippine maritime ecosystem status were presented, and uh, noteworthy, however, to, to 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 point out at this point in time is how precarious is our fishery resources in terms of decline of decline in gross harvests. The gross harvest is increasing, but basically, principally because of the efforts that were, more efforts that were put in it in terms of fish catch, but in terms of unit of catch, in terms of per capita catch, it's declining. Then the second, the second uh, presentation was made by Director Yu Xinghua, one of China, China, basically he focused on how blue economy went into the agenda of APEC, which basically started on 2011, and how blue economy was implemented or is being op implemented by China in their, their country. Then followed by Tony Noel, which basically the vice chair of ABAC, which is the uh, APEC, uh, Business Advisory Council, Vice Chair of the ABAC. He talked about the New Zealand implementation of the quota system, fisheries quota system and management system. There are a lot of uh, very important observations or informations that were given in that area. Not only on the quota system, but in terms of how they monitor and how they keep track of fish catch precisely because it is very important how they how they how they can allocate and develop the quota system annually in fact one of the most important question that was posed then in as a learning lesson for that developing countries is basically how they spatially allocated the marine and coastal area in terms of uh, fisher, fisher folks, fisher, fishing companies will have to operate. That constituted the morning session. The afternoon session, we have also three speakers. It was basically made by, the first speaker was from Russia, Andre Kim, and he brought a new idea and a new agenda 
into the table of APEC, which is the global fishery certification certification system, which is to proposing for APEC to basically push and follow through in terms of discussion to the ultimate adoption of a blue economy certifications system. This is a very new and very, very, uh, you know, uh, still a big idea. And uh, in fact, we requested, uh, Secretary Pai or the chair requested Re Russia to spearhead or shepherd the whole discussion on this point through the APEC coming discussions for the coming years. I think this will be brought principally to the discussion to the table, main table of ocean and marine discussion in Peru last year because the next host will be Peru next year. Then Director Aces, uh, Under Secretary Aces of our fisheries, talk about the Philippine, uh, Philippine experience uh, in terms of combating illegal, unreport, unreported, unregulated fisheries. This portion now talks about IUU. So the other speaker was from the U.S., Ms. Alison Riad, who basically followed through the certification system discussion and uh, talking about technological technologies which basically can support the whole system. And then, you know, uh, we can only implement a quota, as she said, that in we can only implement quota system properly and uh, monitoring of catch, fish catch. We can impose this to the whole fishery management system through consumer pressure and retailers pressure. And uh, re that's why the, the, the whole discussion focused on how basically to shepherd consumer pressure towards the development of a quota system and and then uh, catch catch monitoring that basically ended the whole discussions on session one at this present time session two is going on secretary alcala now is the one presiding at this point fish loss will be the fish loss reduction and increased fish production is the topic at this point in time that's it. That's what happened today. Thank you. Rita, you have something? Objective. Thank you, sir. Uh, so as, as was mentioned by uh, the Undersecretary, uh, there were two presentations from the Philippines, and one was uh, uh, our presentation. The first presentation was on marine protected areas. Um, basically, uh, the presentation focused on the how marine protected areas contributes to the blue economy and to fisheries. And we presented uh, several data that proves that uh, with, uh, with protection, prolonged protection, there's actually an increase of, of fisheries and the spillover benefits the communities. We also um, mentioned that some of uh, our that the uh, several governance mechanisms of our protected areas, basically our initiatives uh, um, uh, on protected areas. We have the national uh, protected areas under the National Integrated Protected Area System Act, and then we have locally managed uh, protected areas. Uh, we gave the example of local marine protected areas in the Verde Island Passage. And we, uh, and then we also have uh, uh, transboundary cooperation with other countries, like with uh, Malaysia, uh, on the protection of marine turtles. But uh, with that protection, it also um, the outcome eventually is also the protection of fishery stocks. So this is how we were able to link our efforts on the protection of our important uh, marine areas, coastal ecosystems, uh, to the blue economy, and eventually uh, to the increased uh, fishery production. By, by the way, 
uh, all these discussions and presentation will lead towards the development of the action plan that will be the ultimate output of this conference. Thank you. Thank you. Anything else, sir? That, that's all. Uh, thank you, Yusek Karachi and Director Mundita Lim. Uh, before we proceed to the question and answer, uh, may I please request the members of the media who will be asking questions to please raise their hand, uh, wait to be recognized before approaching the mic in the middle, and that you please introduce yourself and the media entity that you are representing. Um, in addition, may we please respectfully request everyone to ask only APEC-related questions and to ask all your questions now because we will not be entertaining um, questions afterwards. Thank you. Uh, with that said, uh, the floor is now open. Yes, ma'am. Good evening. I'm Sweden Balado from the People's Television. For Yusek Hirochi and Director Lim, um, Sir, ma'am, since the APEC dialogue aims to produce action plans geared towards caring for our coastal areas, are there any recommendations or efforts discussed regarding protection of and respect for each economy's maritime territories? And then my next question po is, can we also reiterate how the amended Section 14 of the Fisheries Code would better protect our aquatic resources? Thank you. Uh, by the way, uh, there were there are a lot of recommendations coming in. Uh, in fact, every topic there are sets of recommendations coming in. Um, like I said, uh, most uh, the most noteworthy now is what Mundita presented. The, the protected area, marine protected area approach uh, in terms of conserving and increasing fish stocks. Uh, like I said, the other word coming from Russia, it talks about how to develop a quota system and how to allocate maritime areas to fishing corporations or fishers so that, in fact, they can monitor properly fish catches. There are also mechanisms from New Zealand that, that, that were recommended or proposed in terms of you know, penalties that are being imposed when catches were beyond, beyond the allocated uh, volume of catches. And all others, uh, minor, minor or major recommendations at the end of the day will come out in the action plan. Um, I hope, uh, I, I, I think I cannot, I cannot lay all of this at this point in time because the action plan is still under negotiation. There are still a lot of uh, uh, backdoor backdoor negotiation going on at this point in time. So, but what is outstanding at this point in time is provisions about how to conserve resources. We have a chapter on that. And then how to control and, and, and how to, to avoid or, yeah, to control IUU, which is the, uh, illegal and uh, unreported and unrestricted fishing. And there is also a chapter about uh, the food chain, food loss. We have a lot of recommendations in that area, uh, food loss in terms of from the production area towards the market. Uh, in fact, it was discussed earlier that almost 60% of food produced is lost until it reaches market. So if you talk about food security and food sufficiency, if we can only solve that kind of problem there, then food security and food insufficiency may at this point in time be alleviated to the level of, you know, maybe we can sufficiently secure the food, that food security issue among countries or among nations or among economies, sorry, we don't need to mention nations here. APEC talks about economies, not countries and nations. 
Dita. Uh, okay. Uh, there were um, uh, a lot of uh, interest in uh, the in our presentation on the protection of our uh, coastal eco uh, marine ecosystems, um, and uh, I think there were there were some interventions by uh, countries uh, by uh, China, um, uh, Russia, and Australia. Yeah. In Vietnam, uh, who said that they are uh, very interested to share experiences on on uh, community-based uh, protection. So basically, this is the protection of of the coastal and marine ecosystem that is within our municipal waters, waters where the community plays a very big role. So therefore, th um, uh, we we. Uh, we also spoke about uh, uh, livelihoods from other sources, like uh, for ecotourism that can be promoted for marine protected areas so that it can uh, assist in generating uh, additional income if you are to win away some of the fisher, fishing communities from, from overfishing. So uh, it, it was mostly a discussion on um, on community-based efforts uh, yeah, in, in this morning's meeting. But by the way, I'd like to add the fact that when we are discussing blue economy, uh, details of technology development in relation to how to conserve fishery resources will be coming in. But, but at this point in time, we are just discussing about, you know, development, uh, capacity building, and, and basically technology joint researches and joint development of technologies. But specific technologies at this point in time uh, are still a limited, limited uh, menu of technologies that we can avail of at this point in time. But focus now of the discussion principally in terms of management, like the approaches on NPA, coastal management, coastal community management. So in terms of blue technology, in terms of fishery practices, what that on the table now is basically cooperation among APEC economies to develop technologies along that line. Yes, ma'am. Good evening. I am Runji Hamol of Radio Nang Bayan. Um, encroachment of China in the Philippine Sea has its environmental implications, especially to our marine resources. Has this been discussed in your dialogue? In the context of some fisher folks, catch are also affected uh, because of the encroachment. Sorry, ma'am. How do I say this? Uh, APEC is not a political forum. We don't discuss jurisdictional conflicts. Environmental issues, in fact, China this morning invited all economies for cooperative, bilateral cooperative cooperations in relation to blow economy. That is uh, an invitation that in fact we need to cooperate and join, join efforts towards conserving resources. But in terms of jurisdictional issues, APEC will always not discuss that. It's not on the table. In, in fact, we were, we were so cautious on that issue. So, sorry, but we cannot answer that area there. Thank you, sir. Do we have any other questions? Yes, ma'am. Good afternoon. I'm Lydia Pendon of the Manila Times. <clears throat> In your discussions this morning, have you also touched on the issue of smuggling of fish and other uh, marine products because it is so rampant already 
among countries, and most of them are, are caught in the Philippine Seas. Yeah, it was discussed part, partly when we started discussing IUU. And uh, when we are trying to discuss about fish catch monitoring and uh, uh, what was that? Uh, quota system. In fact, New Zealand dealt on that uh, in a long, in, for a long period of time precisely because they're talking about when they implemented the quota system and when they implemented that zone assignment system, it reduced poaching and it reduced a lot of, but like I said, the uh, illegal trading of fish basically was subsumed in the discussion of Bayou U because the trade aspect of it was discussed by the other forum, like we have a forum on on trade, it was discussed there. But at this point in time, the focus was in IUU and poaching level. Speaking on, speaking of poaching, there are, there are fishing boats of other countries caught um, uh, smuggling uh, marine products here in the Philippines. When caught, who, who will foot the bill? Is it the Philippine government? So, uh, example is uh, this uh, pawikan what that was caught last uh, last month. Put the bill. What bill? Who will foot the bill? Because these uh, marine products were already dead, and they cannot be sold anymore. Yeah, they are confiscated. By the way, they are confiscated by the Philippines. Yes, they are all confiscated when they are caught, and uh, poachers are being charged legally in court. Penalties are being levied. Sir? Uh, good evening. I'm Angela Samonte from the Presidential News Desk. Uh, there's a presentation this morning about the declining production in yeah. peace in marine, in our marine resources. What are the causes of this decline, ma'am, in production? Uh, actually, there are um, several causes, which include the IUU fishing, overfishing, but our uh, presentation this morning focused on uh, the, uh, the, the destruction of the habitat, of coastal habitat. Um, so that's why, uh, we focused on the solution of establishing marine protected areas in areas where we f feel must be protected for the for for the fishery stocks to recover. Okay, so uh, yeah, so that's what. And then of course, climate change also plays a, a role at this point in time. Uh, it it does uh, it it causes coral bleaching in some of our. Um, areas in, in coral reef areas in the Philippines. So uh, we have, we already have, uh, we use the data of uh, less than uh, the coral reef uh, excel in excellent and in good and excellent conditions around 6%. So that means the rest of the, uh, our coral reef areas in the Philippines are in fair to poor condition. So that also leads to the decline of, of our fishery stocks. Ma'am, how, how big is the decline? Yeah, maybe year-on-year year basis, based okay. on latest data. Yeah. Um, the, the, the last data I, in, the early, in early 2000 is we still had a 5% excellent, excellent condition. Uh, but uh, the data that we have is the latest data. We only have less than 1% in excellent condition. Coral, that is so coral. Coral reef, that coral is the coral reefs. reef. Yeah, and uh, in, of course, when they did the, when our experts um, correlated that with the decline in fisheries, uh, it, it, uh, uh, it coincided with some of the decline in fisheries. It's um it's in the presentation. I, I don't have it in 
my head at the moment, but it was in the presentation because studies were conducted in, in several marine protected areas. Um, one, uh, we also presented a data on uh, some of our protected areas, like uh, in Apo Island, where in 10 years time, uh, from 2%, uh, when it was intact, there was a baseline information. When it was intact, the uh, one kilometer square of coral reef can produce 20 to 30 tons of fish. Okay. So um, in, if it is in excellent condition, but if it is destroyed, uh, it, the, production, the fishery production would drop to less than 5%. Tapos, uh, in 10 years' time of protection, it will only recover up to 5%. So hindi pa marireach yung optimum. We need to, the, the protection takes a long time uh, for, for destroyed coral reef areas. And then we also had the data, it's not just coral reef, but also seagrass beds are also important um, ecosystems for fishery production. So we, uh, our data shows that uh, we've lost about 30% of our seagrass beds. And uh, that also contributes. And then we have also mud flats. That's another ecosystem which also provides nutrients for for uh, some of our uh, marine, important marine uh, resources. So with all those together, uh, it, uh, that contributes now to the, to the drop in, in uh, fishery production. But we, we, offer, we offered uh, the, uh, the approach of establishing marine protected areas in um, well, lo either locally managed or nationally managed protected areas can be uh, a, a good approach to recover the, the depleting fish, uh, fish stock. But it, of course, it has to be taken together. The, uh, that's why we also had the presentation on IUU fishing, because there's also illegal fishing, there's also unsustainable fishing methods, and then marine protected areas. All of those has to be taken together to be able to protect our fishery resources. Ma'am, ma how, how helpful is the amended fishery code in maintaining our protected areas? Because we have an amended fishery code. Uh, yeah. uh, well, it's uh, actually it's very strong on, on, on protection, on conservation, the, the fisheries code now. Uh, it's just that uh, we probably need to uh, work, cooperate to be able to strengthen the implementation. Because uh, sometimes uh, we have we we need to uh, we need to ensure that it is enforced, but otherwise the the law is has uh, is um, uh, we think the law would be able to uh, uh, support the further support the protection of our remaining uh, fishery resources. It's, it even talks about marine protected areas as well, so we we feel that it will strengthen. Uh, it will strengthen protection of our seas and then help uh, uh, help restore our fish stocks. But uh, we need to uh, have the capacity to to uh, and the capacity and the resources to be able to enforce it. Ma'am, yung yung bang law enforcement is just a major concern for the government. Yeah. Yes. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, as uh, I think the question earlier is also related to that. Uh, there is still, because uh, uh, our coastal areas is very, uh, Last, it's a big, yeah, big it's a, we have a very big coastal area. It's it's very difficult to to secure, uh, but um, yeah, but if we, that's why we also we we also promote com uh, community uh, uh, conservation it's areas. Yeah, so that uh, all of us can work together to be able, the national government cannot do it by themselves. Um, yeah, so it, 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 is a, it is a problem. Uh, we have marine turtle poaching, but 
Uh, the good thing is this morning there were some solutions that were presented. As Yusei Kirochi mentioned, certain some technologies may be available for us to utilize, utilize. like uh, barcoding, DNA barcoding, for example, uh, can be used to trace uh, the the fish. This, yeah fish, fish. being smuggled or the the source of the of the sp species or the animals that are being smuggled out of the country. I believe have, I believe you have time for one or two more questions. None. Um, so, no one going once, going twice. Okay, with that, um, if there are no more questions, I would like to thank Yusek Hirochi and Director Monbita Lim for taking the time to be with us this afternoon and for everyone for participating. Uh, this concludes our press briefing for today. Thank you very much.